Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Monday, July 10th, and it is probably the beginning of the first work week in a couple for so many of you. The uh, Independence Day holiday really had a lot of people out and about and flitting around and hopefully taking some time and recharging batteries because I think that is so important. I know that Mark and I are big fans of the vacation and taking your time when you can. If you've got the time and you've been thinking about something in your financial life or in your real life and it's starting to bug you or it's starting to agitate you or it's maybe catalyzing some action, maybe you would like to check in with us. If you want to do that, just go to our website, jillonmoney.com, jillonmoney.com and click the contact us button. While you're on the website, don't forget to sign up for the free weekly newsletter. Mark puts that together every single Friday. And it's chock full of very interesting information that you may have missed. And don't forget, by the way, we've got another podcast. It's called Money Watch and lots of other free content that lives on the website. Today, we're talking to Jonathan, who is on the line from the Bay Area. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? I'm good. Hi, Jill and Mark. Uh, Uh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited also. Tell us what we can do for you. So um, I'm 59 this year. Um, I've been working uh, for, I don't know, 30 years in this country. Uh, I came from Asia, immigrant. So like a typical computer science major, uh, I got a job in Silicon Valley and got green card, got U.S. passport, buy the house. Then I think I'm so ready to leave my work. I just want to make sure it's okay. Okay. So you're ready to call it quits, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, Are you married? Are you single? Partnered? I'm single. Okay. That always makes it easier, I have to say. Um, Do you have any kids from- No kids. No kids floating around. Okay. So, Jonathan, tell us about your needs. Like, what do you think you need to live on for your expenses? What are we trying to, what are we trying to finance here? Because past two years, uh, pretty much I've been working from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, I realized that I don't have to spend too much money. Mm-hmm. I think six thousand mm-hmm. dollars could make me very comfortable. Of okay. course, because my current job covers insurance, right, and covers like a gym membership, uh, cell phone, a lot of things. So six thousand, pretty much without insurance. Without insurance. So we'd Correct. have to put, but we'd have to say, so like for 1, other stuff, 000. maybe another, I was going to say probably 7,000 mm-hmm. is probably yeah, the seven. fair number. Okay. Right. So 7,000 a month is what our need is. Tell us about the money that you have accumulated. Well, what have you saved? In retirement account, my IRA is about one point, it just said one, 1 million. Okay. And Roth about 52,000. So that's a retirement account. Mm-hmm. So I would say 1.1 1. 1 million. Mm-hmm. Then I have after tax account brokerage firm about 1.6 million. Mm-hmm. So total is about 2.7 million, uh, mm-hmm. which is uh, managed by a financial advisor. Mm-hmm. Then I have my own play money with Schwab, uh, about $1 million. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. That is a shocking moment when you're like, it's my play money. It's another million dollars. So it's another after tax million dollars. Yeah. How are we doing versus the managed money? How are, how are just buying index funds or, you know, or whatever you're doing in Schwab? How well, is that for doing? For the play money part, I'm very, very conservative. Actually, I have 70, 70% of cash, cash equivalent, such wow. as uh, money market fund, T-bill, okay. that kind of thing. So okay. only 30% stocks and ETF. Okay. So, wow. Any other assets? Like, do you own a home? Yes, I do. Uh, I have a condo about seven hundred now. Was well, one million, <laughs> but now it's like everyone everyone moving out of Bay Area. Now oh, it's only yeah. seventy thousand. Uh, seven hundred. Yeah, yeah. I live okay. there, and uh, I also I also have a rental property. It says one point two million. Kind of crazy. Uh, oh. I have rental income about two thousand at least after all of this tax and fees. Oh, HOA. Okay, yeah. so really like a real net of two thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to guess because you did say you were the immigrant, and so I'm wondering: is there any mortgage that's left on either of these? No, I knew it, Mark. That was such a slam dunk question to ask. Okay, so um, two grand a month. When you look into the future. 
in addition to that rental property, you would be entitled to Social Security. What is your Social Security estimate at age, your full retirement age? It'd be 67. What, I what think is that? Three, 3,000 something. I checked like 62, I'd be like a 2,000 something. Now, and we won't 67, 3,000, and uh, 70 is 4,000 something, I, think, I guess. All right. So 3,000 of the $7,000 a month. When you're 67, you'll have the rental income, you have your social security, we're all good. So um, when you retire, if you say at the end of this year, you're retired, what are you going to do? Do you think you'll work? Do you, will you have any other desire to do something, a little side hustle? What do you think? I don't know yet. I, this is my problem. I have been working all the time. So mm -hmm. I realized that I don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think that's my own uh, thing. I have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I just need to f see if I can simply walk away from yeah. working. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, you have a lot of money. And if you needed to sell one of your properties, would you be willing to do so? Yeah, I could. Yes. Okay. All right. So that would be, you'd be willing to do that, which is great. Okay. In terms of the like looking ahead, any other large expense? Like, do you have family members? Is there someone that you need to take? You know, any any obligations? What I'm seeking out, like anything else that's out there? Yeah, I'm very lucky. I, you know, my parents have their own income, their own pension. Okay. They don't need my money. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's just do quick math. And and by oh, one last thing. I'm so sorry. In the Schwab account, you have all that cash. Do you have another any other cash that's sitting in a bank someplace? About 80000 mm -hmm. uh cash and iPhone. You're fine. Here's how I figured this, just to give you the back of the envelope. You're 59, and you've got, you've got the million, 1.1-ish in retirement. You've got 1.6 in after tax, and then a million in the Schwab account, right? So that's a yes. very quick calculation. That looks like $3.7 million. And so when you look at... $3.7 million. And you say, what would that comfortably generate without me plundering through all of my money? Right. If we just said, well, you know, let's take, I don't know, two and a half percent. You know how you've, have you heard about the 4% withdrawal yes. number? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to even make it better. Let's say it's not, let's not, let's use instead of 4%, we're not even going to use 3%. I'm going to give you a very conservative number. Let's say it's two and a half percent. That's $92,500. Let's further say that not all of that is taxable, but some of it would be because some of it is pre-tax money, right? So, you know, what would happen is that, you know, once you paid tax, now I've got 75, 80 grand in every single year. And that's going to take you to what you need. You only need $84,000. And that doesn't even include the fact that, you know, we have $2,000 a month in retirement and uh, rental income and that you would actually not have to take that much money out once you start receiving Social Security. So you're sweet, Jonathan. You, there's nothing that stands in your way except, you know, of course, you got to figure out what you want to do. Right. Okay. That's good to hear. <laughs> I mean, it, I was I, always wondering because I'm I'm still working, and you didn't ask me how much money I make. I don't care. How about that? All I asked you was, you notice how we we did this? We started with, "What do you need?" Because you said, "I want to think about retirement. I'm ready to retire. I've been working for 30 years in this country." It's exactly what you said. And I followed up with you. I said, "How much do you need?" You said six thousand a month, maybe seven thousand. Right? It's irrelevant to me how much you make now, because if you stopped working this minute, I know you could do it. How much do you make? Two twenty. And you're maxing out your retirement. Yes. And you're still saving money. This guy must be some sitter because he lives in California. 220, it's a nice living, but he, he he's not killing it. But you must be saving a ton of money all these years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it's what I can tell you is you do not have a problem. I mean, it's it's simple to say that like it's just as easy as you have so much money saved that it will generate the money you need, plus you have rental income, and then you'll get Social Security. Like, It's almost like you can't screw this up. And what's so cool about this is that you've given yourself lots of options. Now, I will say what you absolutely need to think about 
is what am I going to do with myself? Because that's probably stopping you from doing anything. And I think that is a different kind of a question, which is a really good one that's worth asking. It absolutely, to me at least, I think if you could really concentrate on that part of it and don't worry about the money because the money we know is you're all set. But if you can really start to tackle that, that's the key here. That's where you're going to gain some ground. I think that would, you don't have to really worry about this. You've done an incredible, incredible job saving. I mean, Mark, it's like the, the typical immigrant story. You can make this like sort of extrapolate this across the country. How many people have done such a good job? Not everybody is like Jonathan in that, like they're in a field where you can make a lot of money, but this uh, concept that often we see in the immigrant cultures where people are just saying, Hey, I am here. I'm taking advantage of it and I'm going to save like crazy. It's, it's amazing. And, and I can say this because I'm very close to the Asian community. When it's an Asian, you know, there's rental property. Yeah. I mean, I did, I did notice, I mean, I think it's funny. Like if you want it, by the way, do you know about the tax arbitrage that you could make with that rental property, which is essentially because you're probably depreciating it. If you really wanted to get the government and, you know, hook them a little bit, you move into the rental property, you sell your primary, right? You got long-term capital oh, the, gain on the primary. Yes. Yeah. And then you take that and then you live in the rental property for five years and then you're fine. And then it's like, you're now, you're not even treating that as recapture of depreciation. So I don't know. Do you like the, is the rental property nice? It's worth more. I don't know if it's like a place you'd want to live. You don't have to worry. I'm just saying that if you want to do a little tax planning, that's something to keep in the back of your mind. Good. Thank you. Uh, I think I have another question about okay. financial advisor. Okay. So um, I have been using a financial advisor for 10 years. The funny thing is I'm a, I'm a people manager at work. I do performance review, but I don't know how to evaluate my financial advisor. Mm, Previously, I just, I just checked the total amount of money uh, on my statement. Okay, every year it's increasing. That's fine. Right. Then starting 2021, when S&P 500, I think, had 27% increase, Mm -hmm. I realized my portfolio only had like maybe 10, 12% increase. Mm -hmm. Then last year, uh, my portfolio had minus 12% decrease. So, I mean, 12% decrease. Then I got a statement from the brokerage firm about this uh, time weighted return um, with the uh, reference index. Mm -hmm. I realized that the return comparing with the reference index every year most years is below the uh, reference index. So that means my financial advisor doesn't seem to do his job. <laughs> well, it kind of depends. First of all, is this person only managing money for you? Is that all that that person's doing? In yeah, other words, do they, I think so. Yeah, they're, just, they're not giving you a financial plan. I mean, you're calling us to ask about your retirement. In that case, how much do you pay this person? Uh, 75, 0.75. Okay. So you're paying three quarters of a percentage point and they have the, uh, the total of the value of the assets they're managing 2.7 is 2.7. So it's a fair price, but it's just asset management. And meaning if you look at your other million dollars in Schwab, I know you wouldn't manage it the same way, but if you looked at it and you said, well, if I had the $2.7 million, what would I do? I would buy some index funds and I would buy a diversified portfolio and I would just be trying to sort of have a balanced portfolio. That's something that you could do yourself if you cared to, or you could get it done much more cheaply or efficiently by, you know, maybe using the, the Schwab service, which is kind of like a robo advisor for people who have money. Um, there are many other places that do that, like Vanguard and Fidelity. The thing is, if you're paying three quarters of a percentage point, I would have hoped that the person who's delivering that service is not just saying, oh, you know, I'm managing your money, but I'm doing everything for you. And I think that that they're not doing that because look, I really think that in this world where we live in, I think that Money management is a commodity, okay? You can go to T. Rowe Price or TD Ameritrade or Vanguard or Schwab or Fidelity and E-Trade and you can buy yourself five or six different index funds, each account that you have and 
go to sleep at night and not really worry. You can go to Betterment or Vanguard Personal Service Advisor or Schwab Intelligent Portfolio, and you can pay them, I don't know, a quarter to uh, 0.3% and have them have a robo-advisor for you. Whatever money you save, it's just going to go to your bottom line. And given that this, I, I, I'm shocked that this person doesn't really offer to do like full-blown financial planning because, because so much of the world is actually commodified when it comes to money management. Yeah, I just realized recently. I was going to say, I, I don't know how the money is invested, you know, based on your age and whatnot. But in terms of the returns, I, I know you said 2021 was a big year and you only made 10%, but you said last year you only lost 12%. Well, the S&P lost 19%. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, it's okay. As long as you, I mean, again, if you have a balanced portfolio, okay. And you say to this person, I don't care if I make as much on the way up, as long as I don't lose as much on the way down, that's fine. But you can do that yourself. And you can also have a robo to do that for you. So I think that, I think you've got more options and I would suggest that you explore those. I really would. I'm not sure that like anyone's doing harm to you in this current advisor or that they're not executing a, a, balanced, diversified plan. But I just think money management is a commodity. And there's no one who's got a magic formula. There's no man behind the curtain. There's no great Oz, right? It's a game of just having a diversified portfolio of low cost funds. That can be done by lots of different people. Many people will work with advisors mostly for the other stuff, for the, for the financial advice. That to me is really worth it. But for money management only, eh, I, I don't see that to be your problem. You know, like I think you're fine. If you would like to bring your concerns, your excitement, your issues, just your thought process to a particular aspect of your financial life, we'd love to hear from you. All you need to do is go to our website, jillonmoney.com, jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button. Don't forget to let us know if you want to come on the air live with us. All right. It's the beginning of a work week for so many of you. So please do something nice for someone else today. It's going to make that person feel really good. It's going to make you feel even better. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.